What's a scam that's become normalized? Story 1. Not being able to cancel a subscription online. I can subscribe in 5 minutes, but I need to call your service agents to cancel? And I'm pretty much forced to be rude to them to cancel it because as long as my voice sounds friendly, they try to resell the damn subscription. Slightly different thing, but I had to get a new phone plan while I studied abroad. Signed up in the store within 5 minutes and some help from staff because I was not a native speaker of the language. So how do you cancel them after 5 months? Mail them a letter. In 2019, they made me mail them a letter to cancel my phone plan that I had for one semester of college. Most insane cancellation policy I've ever seen. Try canceling a gym membership. Some want you to prove you've moved more than 25 miles away before they'll cancel you even when your contract is up. And unless you actively cancel the contract when it expires, they'll automatically renew your contract. Oh, don't remind me of the time I had to cancel my gym membership. They almost forced me to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Almost. Story 2. Buying tech devices for premium prices, then still having to pay subscriptions to make them actually do what they're supposed to do. Like my stupid printer. I paid for the printer, I paid the dumb raised price for the inks, and now I'm expected to pay a subscription if I want to print in color. Duck the stupid company. I don't pay a subscription for the inks. It's an Axis photography specific printer. I own the ink. They are expensive, but I have them. I have to pay a subscription to use the color print function. You can only print black and white documents without the subscription. I genuinely can't think of a single reason to actually own a printer at your home for non-work related purposes. Just get it done. Story 3 admin fees for completely automated services. In Australia, if you use a toll and don't have a toll account, you can get sent a toll notice with an added $10 admin fee. And if you don't pay it within the requested time frame, the admin fee goes up to $20. A $2.50 toll could end up costing you $22.50. Scam. I used to work for a software company that developed the software to renew your license plates online and stuff like that for a state. That fee was how the state was paying for the software. Hey, we gotta think about the hardworking robot employees, right? Story 4. Medical insurance not covering dental or vision. Like, it's all connected, guys. If you have a badly abscessed tooth, you're likely going to need medical care, even if you have dental that covers the extraction or root canal or whatever. A new one I'm experiencing is that some preventative tests are covered while others are not. Why don't you tell me that ahead of time and I can decline it? Or, you know, just cover everything. I broke a bone at work. They said it was probably soft tissue and scheduled the MRI for three months out. So now I've got an improperly healed bone and nothing to show for it except pain if I move the wrong way. My dental insurance is worthless. When I was younger, I had my front tooth knocked out and the dentist was able to put it back, but it would only last for about 18 years. Fast forward 18 years, the tooth split and got infected. From there, I had to make a decision between a flipper or permanent tooth. The dentist told me if I did not get the permanent tooth, my bones would retreat due to not having a tooth to form around, which would result in more tooth loss. So I went with the permanent tooth and insurance denied coverage claiming it was cosmetic. Preventing future tooth loss was deemed cosmetic. $3,000 out of pocket. This never made sense to me either. How is dental not considered medical? Story 5 resort fees at hotels. I stayed at a hotel in Boston and they had a $30 per day charge that wasn't included in the price when we booked online. Destination charge or something. They told us we got a credit at the restaurant because of it, so we shrugged it off. The next morning, we tried to use the credit and they told us it was only good for dinner. I went to the front desk after we ate and told them to reverse the charge. They said they couldn't. I politely said they could. They did. Saved us $120 for that trip. This one bit me last year. A vendor my company works with asked me to come to a big conference. All fees paid. I flew out there, the hotel was paid for, and I went to check in. Oh, sir, we need a card for the remaining fees. Turns out it was everything but the resort fees, and I had a surprise $100 plus to pay for an already paid for event. I think XYZ fees are a pretty recurring scam. Story 6. 
subscriptions for already paid apps. Recently got quite annoyed when not only was a game I paid for turned to free with ads, no refund for me of course, then they had the gall to release a classic version of the game that was paid without ads, which I naturally didn't automatically get for free despite having already paid for the original version. I'm going to go further to say subscriptions for software in general. No one wants you to own anymore, and they want to be able to set prices not only for different consumers, but change them on the fly, holding whatever hostage. But things need updates, the bad faith actors say. Subscribe to updates, not to the whole app. Upgrade when you feel the updates are worth it. Many pieces of subscription-based software just don't actually need much updating, so you end up paying for nothing indefinitely, since you've already by far paid for the work done. It's like they're trying to squeeze every last dollar out of you. Story 6 corporate home buying on a massive scale. They pay more than the asking price because when they do, the higher price will increase the value of the other homes they own. The system wasn't set up this way, and they are positioned to do some serious damage to the economy. The system wasn't set up this way. No, but this was the most obvious possible logical conclusion of selling off the public housing stock with zero regulations, and then completely bizarrely doing exactly nothing to regulate it as it became the world's most obvious get-rich-off-the-backs-of-the-poor scheme and proceeded to completely break the global economy. We live in the end result of governments just doing nothing at all as the world burns for literal decades. I live in a small country town where there are about 1,500 homes. One third of it is occupied and the rest is Airbnb. I actually freak out a bit in winter walking along certain stretches because no one is around for a couple of miles. Just an Airbnb ghetto of emptiness. A couple of months ago, I walked by a house on my usual route and noticed the fence was on fire. Dingaling last people staying apparently dumped the cold coal slash ashes of an outdoor fire on the fence garden area. Anyway, I panicked and called the fire brigade and then tried to find help from someone around me, but there was no one. So spooky when you have an entire village but zero people because it's all Airbnb rentals in the off season. I didn't realize things were this bad. Story 7 transaction fees when using online banking. I do all the work filling out the form so a bank employee doesn't have to, yet I get charged the same. We're in the golden age of consumer online banking. There are countless reputable banks that will take anyone and don't do any of this stuff. I don't understand how this is still an issue for some people. Charles Schwab or Ally Bank, spread the word. Why am I getting charged for using my own money? Make it make sense. Story 8. Nobody else mentioned it so far, printer cartridges. Their production costs about 20 to 30 cents a pop, but they sell it for $15, sometimes up to $35. Also, they say it's running low even though there's plenty left. Also, that if the color one is out, you have to buy the black one and vice versa for the printer to work. Back in the day, that was not the case. I remember doing school papers, and if the black ink ran out, I just changed the font color to navy blue and it still printed. Ah, uh, again with the printer cartridges. Story 9. Raise the price of a product a day before they go on sale so that people think they are getting it at a discount. Now that's actually been illegal in Germany for a few weeks. The compare price must be the lowest of the last 30 days. Here in Australia, the law is the product must have been at the sale price a certain duration before you can reduce it and claim a special. Buy one get one free is an easy way for shops to have a sale where they do not need to worry about how long it was at the price before the sale. A major supermarket recently advertised it was having a price freeze. Cynics wondered if they had hiked up the prices first before announcing the freeze. That law should really be implemented on a global scale. Can't really tell if anything's on sale these days. Story 10. Tipping for services in the US, and it's getting worse. It's a way to pay lower wages to employees and expect consumers to pay a surcharge to make up for it. More workers are expecting tips and the expected amount is going up. I travel globally and don't see anything like it anywhere else. So much this. It's a total minefield in America. In the UK, a tip isn't expected, but I'll leave a couple of quid if I've had some good service. In America, I found that even the crappiest of service demands at least 
just 20 percent. 20 freaking percent. And they're never grateful when they get just that. And tipping expectations for unexpected services too. My first time in New York, I got into Port Authority in Manhattan and was looking to get a cab to my hotel. I get outside, approached by a guy who asks if I'm needing a cab. I say yes and he flags one down for me. We get in and ride off to his face turning raging as the cab pulls away. I turn to the missus and I'm like, what's with him? And she said, I think he expected a tip. And my reply was, for that? I could have freaking done that. And then of course, you have to tip the cab driver too. I had similar experiences traveling in the US over from Europe. I even had the reverse experience of trying to tip someone who it turns out was offended. I thought he was only being helpful so he'd get a tip. I was driving around a parking garage when I couldn't find an empty space. I saw a guy at a little desk in uniform asked which floor do I have the best chance of finding a space in, so he gives me some advice. My Britishness kicks in and I start wondering to myself, he wants a tip or maybe he doesn't. A tip just for that? I'll play it safe and hand him a couple of dollars to be sure. He looked annoyed and refused the tip, and I could tell he was a little offended. Turns out he was just being helpful or doing his job, or both really. It's a ruddy minefield. It's really strange strange how we encourage restaurants to legally underpay workers so they ask for tips. Story 11 Insurances, the only freaking business in the world that will fight you claw and teeth to deny you the product you have been paying for years to get. Right, like I don't understand why I'm paying $200 to $300 a month only to get a $2,000 deductible I have to pay first before it even kicks in. But God forbid you don't have it and break an arm. Then you're really screwed. I got T-boned by a big truck that ran a red light while I was on my motorcycle and had to sue my own insurance to get them to do their job. The insurance adjuster told me she was going to mark it as a 50-50 fault, and when I asked why, she cited a statistic that 90-something percent of motorcycles are speeding before an accident, and I was like, I was pulling away from a full stop at an intersection, so I was going maybe 15 miles per hour in a 40 mile per hour zone and there's a video from the gas station on the corner of the intersection showing the whole incident. She tried to put me at fault. Totally agreed. Never seen an industry that hates its customers this much. Story 12. Weddings and every business tied to weddings. $30,000 for one day? F that. We spent about $4,000 at a campground on a lake in Maine. The campground had never hosted a wedding before, so they let us use their beautiful wood lodge for free because we rented so many cabins and campsites for an off-season September weekend. Ten years later, and our guests still say it was the best wedding they've ever been to, and it was a really fun party. I admittedly freaking hate weddings. It was a crap ton of work, though to DIY everything to save costs. My advice is to find a unique venue that doesn't normally do weddings, since venue cost is normally the biggest cost. It's mainly the venues that absolutely rip people off. I've been in the industry for a while, and venues are doing everything they can to raise their price point as cheap as possible. It's all fake luxury. The people who show up on the day, like photographers, videographers, DJs, bands, florists, etc., are typically reasonably priced. If you're looking to save money on weddings, just just cut out the fancy venue. It's honestly up to you if you want to spend that much on your wedding. You could even do it in your backyard. Story 13. Diamonds. There are loads of them, but apparently they're rare, so sell for major stacks. Diamonds are fascinating. They're kept artificially scarce by the people who own the diamond mines, and they've managed to somehow ensure that there's no market for reselling them. Diabolical. And on top of that, they've convinced everyone that diamonds are the only worthwhile stone, and that only natural mined diamonds are worthwhile, not fake lab-grown real diamonds. There are so many fascinating rocks and in a number of cases, the actual stuff can be grown pretty inexpensively and more environmentally friendly. Diamonds are probably the most overrated rocks in the world. There are so many cooler gems out there. Story 14 releasing unfinished, unplayable, massively buggy video games. Adding to that, people need to stop racing to pay top dollar. I, for one, look forward to paying $9 for Cyberpunk on a PC that actually doesn't cost a kidney to enjoy, with all the patches. But I'm in no hurry. Consumers have driven the rising cost of games by their willingness to pay day one. It's getting harder to spot whether games are actually finished when they're released, too. Sometimes the titles are released with only the bare minimum 
minimum of feature set, with months-long, possibly years-long development roadmaps to complete the experience in the way they ultimately intend for it. What you get, not knowing it's still in development, but available for you to purchase as released, is an unoptimized mess of partially implemented features, wildly unbalanced skill resource trees, blatantly placeholder animations and textures, unreliable save states, etc, etc. You hearing this, video game companies? No one wants to be the next cyberpunk. At least I hope they don't. Story 15 Hustle culture. Working 90-hour weeks and having no life outside of work is not healthy, nor is it sustainable. I just turned 50, and I have decided I've stopped trying to impress people with my work ethic. I'll work hard, of course, but I sure am not going to put in anything beyond my 8 hours if I can help it. What am I going to do? Water my plants? Make my kids breakfast? Take my dogs for a walk? Try to make my wife laugh with corny jokes? I can see why hustle culture is appealing to some, but working all day and night? Nah. Story 16 Ticketmaster fees. My wife the other day purchased tickets from Ticketmaster for a concert she wanted to go to. She paid and received confirmation emails, etc. Turns out in that email it states that if you don't go 48 hours before to pick up your tickets, then they are cancelled and resold without a refund. How has any company got to such a point to be able to be so cheeky and uncivilized? Bless her, she lost her tickets and good old Ticketmaster was able to sell them twice. I cannot stand Ticketmaster. Fees aside, just absolutely awful practices. I bought tickets to a gig for my partner once. She didn't want seating and we got standing for another venue. No problem, just sold the tickets back to Ticketmaster for face value. Except it was a problem because I didn't get my money back for the tickets for about 9 months. In case there was something wrong with the tickets. The tickets that they had not issued to me. So they kept my refund until after the event was originally supposed to have taken place. I'd maybe understand this in some part, but the fact that they had hadn't sent me the tickets and had cancelled my barcode, how would there be an issue with the tickets for them not to be able to refund me? Ever since, I have never used Ticketmaster. These guys just vented out the frustrations of millions of Swifties around the world. Story 17 free trials that automatically roll over to paid subscriptions. I worked at Spotify and we used to tell customers that it was mentioned in print on the free trial implying that they're not just reading observantly, but the print is so small it's almost an afterthought. I felt disgusted when I was there. Imagine blaming the customers. Or even better, a free trial that auto-renews into paid, but if you cancel within the free period you have to pay more than a normal monthly price as you broke the contract within less than the minimum period. Also that charge isn't written in the ad, but in a link where all their products' legal info is placed, so have fun knowing it without specifically searching for it. The reason I never accept free trials. Even when such a trial might show me it is a good service, I just don't want an overpriced free trial. Anytime I sign up for any kind of free trial, I set a reminder on my phone to remind me five days ahead of the expiration date that I need to cancel it. I don't trust any of those guys, even if they say it will auto-cancel, which which none of them do, I still set the reminder and go check. And once I get the cancellation confirmation screen, I take a screenshot and save it in my pictures folder, just in case. And if they send me an email, that gets filed away too. My whole damn life is on my calendar and reminders list, but I've never had any of these subscriptions roll over like that on me either. I don't understand why we need to use our credit card to get a free trial anyways. Story 18 unpaid internships, especially when they're required for your education. But we pay you in experience slash knowledge slash exposure. You can't put a price on that. That's being greedy. Yes, I can, because my time is worth money just like yours. Don't get me started on this, man. I just graduated. But for my major, computer science, you have to go out and get an internship in your field. I took one of those recommended by the school. Instead of programming or doing anything remotely related to that, I was putting stickers on shirts and taking inventory for a baseball team's merch store. When I spoke up and told my boss this wasn't what I signed up for, he fired me halfway through the semester so I had to pay to register for the class again the next semester to have the privilege of getting another unpaid internship. As someone who has done unpaid internships and generally tries to pay interns in the NGO I run, the worst part in my opinion is that students are paying the university royally for that module, but it costs the university nothing. Students have to 
arrange their own internships and the company needs to provide mentorship slash teaching without compensation and is even responsible for grading. When interns come in with zero work ethic or work skills in a company they are not actually interested in, it can be a lot of work to get them functional, and they can harm operations. People often don't realize it is unpaid work for the company as well, and as soon as it finishes you just lose that employee, so there is little incentive to invest in that learning curve, unless you get a great candidate you see for a future. Now if the tuition for that period were given to either the student and or the company to pay the student and cover mentoring, you know, the actors actually working during the agreement, I'm sure it would work a lot better. Some internship forms actually ask the company to donate to the university on top of doing their job for free for them, expecting to be paid by the student and the company and doing none of the work. I genuinely can't think of anything worse than putting in hours of work and not even being paid in the end. What am I, a parent? Story 19 credit scores. They started in 1989 and are designed to encourage debt. Canada has a similar garbage system. You need credit history to build up your score, and if you don't start at 18, you'll be screwed once you're ready to finally make a bigger purchase because you won't have accounts old enough to give you a solid history. Also, pray for anyone who doesn't have a cosigner for smaller loans slash lines of credit in the beginning. I'm not even sure why we need this score either. Mine is almost perfect now, and it barely made a difference in interest rates for cars slash mortgages. I work so hard to keep it up, and I'm not even sure what I'm getting out of it, but I think bad things will happen if I don't. Yep, didn't get a credit card until I was almost 20 and my boyfriend, now husband, pushed me to get one. I never considered it since I didn't need to borrow money. I moved here from South America when I was young with my parents, and they got into huge debt keeping our family afloat and happy. I worked multiple jobs to afford my five years of uni and never borrowed a single cent outside of a small entrance scholarship. My credit score for almost one whole year sucked, and I didn't understand why it wasn't good since I used it regularly as I was told to, and paid it off once a week. Because of my parents' situation, any sort of debt freaks me out. It was then that my husband told me that I was only able to pay it off after it was officially billed as debt, so when we bought a house I was three years behind in my credit score, when I had worked four plus jobs and 40 plus hours a week, while also doing full time plus extra loans in school to make sure I never was in debt. Yeah, not a fan of this system. Credit scores give me Black Mirror vibes and I can't be the only one who feels this way. Story 20. Employers insisting that employees not talk about their salaries, and job listings not posting salaries. I know in the US the former is straight up illegal. You can't do that and so many people don't realize this to the point companies just go ahead and tell you not to, and even try to penalize people for doing so, because people don't realize they can push back on that. Job listings not having a salary is just vile manipulation and it seems to me like it's bad for business. Why would you want to waste time drawing in and interviewing people? who are going to drop out when they find out the salary rather than post what you're going to pay and adjust if need be. No, wait, I know the answer. It's because they hope someone overqualified will get suckered in and either undersell themselves or go in hoping to get a good raise. This is because they are hiring people at wages higher than their veteran employees make, but don't want the secret getting out. This is similar to the new customer enticements for everything. We'll cut you a deal for switching and just make up the difference with our loyal long time customers. Just a little transparency, that's all I ask for. Story 21 Doing taxes, the American government has the power to do our taxes for us, but instead, they don't, so that businesses can profit off of doing taxes for us. The tax companies are a scam. The government does rely on both the employee and the employer to submit their wages slash withholdings slash etc. This can be completely automatic though if the employer is using someone like ADP, which would cover a ton of people. Small businesses and employees would likely still need to do legwork unless the IRS slash Treasury were to start offering payroll services. I'm not that old, but I remember arguments being made for public schools, teaching high school students how to correctly do taxes, balance checkbooks, financial planning, budgeting, and other financial topics students would need to be responsible and functional adults. But the Board of Education and the county slash state, however, said there was no funding for that, but they apparently had funding for a keyboarding class which was basically an updated version of how to type on a typewriter. Yeah, plenty of funding for a practically useless class that taught a skill that most of us had mastered by the age of 10. I feel like even the government would save a lot more money if they did our taxes for us. Story 22 College Board 
Just go all the way and say standardized testing. The ACT, SAT, GRE, statewide testing, it's all a racket and has almost no educational value outside of college acceptance. It's fine at serving that purpose, I suppose, but the fact that every kid in the state has to take the ACT, where I live and only 40% of kids go to college, the other 60% of tests have no value and only serve to take money. Textbooks are also ridiculous. Barely any context changes, but you need a shy any new book. Also, in cahoots with CB, as they require the instructor to use a textbook that is less than 10 years old. Amen to the textbook stuff. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars for the same book I can get on eBay for a few bucks. Story 21 the five-day work week and having two days to ourselves if we're lucky, and then you die having spent your one life at a place you don't like doing things benefiting God knows who for a chance to pay for a couple of adventures so you can look back and say, well, we did some things, didn't we? Even though you wasted the majority of it, this keeps me awake some nights, leaves me feeling like the comedian in Watchmen. It's a joke. It's all a joke. I have three days off, but only because my shifts are 10 hours, so I sleep almost all all day off and on for the first day. So boom, one day wasted. I fully support a four day work week, but not like this. I'm so worn out and burnt out after doing this for just seven years, but I'll also miss three days off when I get a normal job. Other countries seem to have figured out a shorter work week, so why can't America? Story 22. Homeopathy costs more money than real actual OTC medications and literally has no active chemical in it, just placebo pills. Here in Germany, they actually successfully lobbied for an exemption from the law that demands scientific proof of effectiveness beyond the placebo effect for medicines, because they obviously knew that there was no such proof and there never would be. It's called bin and consens. Basically, you just have to get the community of homeopathic doctors to confirm that your homeopathic sugar pills actually do anything apart from maybe giving you diabetes to be able to sell them, and that's it. It's disgusting. I explained homeopathy to someone once, and he said, so it's just snake oil? And I said, no, because at least snake oil contains snake oil. Story 23. Chocolate bars becoming a smaller size and are still charged the same price and or increased price. A few months ago, I saw something on Facebook about Domino's saying they're removing one wing from the wings and pizza bundle to counter increased wages, or whatever, and so many people were up in arms blaming the workers for the company's decision to do that. I know it was intentional and everything, I just think it's cruel on Domino's part and stupid on the would-be customer's part to deflect onto slash blame the workers who were likely getting minimum slash near minimum wages anyway. Plus, if I remember correctly, it only mentioned the one deal, and like how many people actually get that deal? More specifically, how many of the people who were angry about it on Facebook were likely to get the deal in the first place? Everything is like this now. I collect orders as a job, so I'm watching products shrink every day. I have to be accurate in getting products. At the moment though, I'll be trying to find 500G of X or 8-pack of X, and it's becoming increasingly common that the item is now 400G and a 7-pack with the price staying the same, or even going up, or sometimes the grams go down by tiny increments over a few months. Disgusting to see. I didn't realize this until I saw the calories shrink on the description of my favorite chocolate bar. Turns out there just wasn't as much chocolate. Story 24 not a monetary scam, but putting the majority of the responsibility of stopping climate change slash fixing the environment onto the normal people. I've worked in the food industry and I can tell you for a fact that it doesn't mean dick if I sort my rubbish when every day a single small-scale factory is throwing out literal tons of wasted product, not to mention the energy wasted in making that product. Tons of stuff falls on the floor, perfectly usable food, but not pretty enough to sell, just gets tossed like it's nothing. and even even in my usual sector, engineering, the amount of metal that's wasted and the liters upon liters of grease and oil just freaking everywhere would stun you. Why the heck am I putting in the effort to save power and to make less waste when these barely regulated companies are getting away with this? It's so disheartening. Agree. I worked at a place where one shelf of staple food was made. The label was a little crooked. Throw the huge box of unused packaging out. Calibrating the machines would cause so much material waste. Virtually everything 
is wrapped in dozens of layers of plastic wrap and extra packaging for shipping that the customer never sees. For every one box of products, there was probably a good 10 to 20 pounds of miscellaneous non-recyclable waste produced. And this is a small company, a couple of dumpsters a day. It still hurts my heart to think of the incredible waste our systems actually promote. I think we can all agree that companies are way more harmful to the planet than individual people. Story 25 pet rent and security deposits. I don't have an apartment, but a lot of my friends do. I find it ridiculous that you have to pay 600 plus dollars in deposits and fees, and then your dog is expected to go out and get a job for 1200 more dollars a year. In my youth, I had a lot of apartments. Despite leaving them spotless, I never once got my security deposits back, and I never had animals. To me, they are just excuses to rob tenants of more money. Seriously. Lived in my last apartment for three years. Neither to pay an extra $35 per cat per month. No pet deposit, just an extra fee. So $70 after three years? That's $2,520. The apartment wasn't a crap hole by any means when we moved in. Just a little run down and in need of updating. They replaced the carpet in the living room. Poorly. It wasn't tacked down properly. And you often got poked with tack strips. When we moved in, but the carpets in the bedrooms and hallways had cigarette burns, holes, and stains. My cats never had any accidents outside their litter box. They had the occasional puke, which was easily cleaned up with some carpet spray and scrubbing. We were responsible for professional carpet cleaning when we moved out. Honestly, ridiculous because the carpets themselves were already wrecked beforehand, except for the living room. We left the apartment cleaner than when we moved in. All the landlord had to do was come in and do a fresh coat of white eggshell over everything and it was ready to go for the next tenant. Thankfully, got our full deposit back, but it still sucks that pets are an easy way to grab extra cash. I understand a few bad eggs ruin everything for the rest of us when it comes to pets and rentals. I would have gladly had regular inspections to make sure the property was being taken care of. I mean, I can understand security deposits, doesn't mean I gotta like them. Story 26 Parking at Disney. The parking ticket is already really expensive. The parking lot is on Disney property. Want to charge for the sake of squeezing some extra profits? I'll accept paying $5, but even that seems cutthroat. But charging $50 to park is absurd. It's standard for any business to have adequate parking that is free and convenient for patrons. Not only is it standard, but it's also for the benefit of the business. Can you imagine paying for parking at Home Depot or Walgreens? It would make more sense if the business did not have parking spaces on their property. Therefore, you'd have to park in a private parking garage nearby. $50 for parking? I'd rather walk. Story 27 buying cars. The financing of it all seems like such a scam. The salespeople try to sneak something past you in a contract hoping you'll overlook it. The APR is always up in the air. They try to screw you out of money and you have to be hyper aware of the car buying process to hopefully minimize the damage. Living in cities where you have to own a car. I moved from the States to London, UK and it really solidifies that owning slash maintaining a car is one of the worst burdens we put on ourselves. Cost of the car, gas, routine maintenance, time tires, brakes, oil changes, etc. Insurance? Like, why do we do this to ourselves? Public transit in Europe is so good, and if you do need a car, just get a zip car from around town and do what you need to do. I can vouch for that. It's like car dealerships go out of their way to make the experience as bad as possible. Thanks for watching to the end. If you have a similar experience that you would like to share, please leave it down in the comments below. If you liked this video, please leave us a like and subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.